lay them down over that loop. If you get any ones that are kind of stuck together, I just usually try to separate them. And maybe, looks like that one side needs a little bit more. some more of my predator wrap and on this one I'm going to cut it just a touch longer than the last section but not much so maybe I'll give it right about there be good so some of this sticks out of the when you wrap it it actually looks looks real so I splay it with my fingers I just kind of drape it over making sure it's somewhat aligned in there Good. Maybe some right in the middle right there. All right, perfect. Get my dubbing nut tweezers. And I can take it and even make it a little easier to grab, kind of smush it down a little bit. But I want, in this case, because that darker color is right here, I'm actually going to take it and get it from this side. Because that way, that darker color will be at the front of the hook, which is what I want. Open my loop up again. Figure out which way it twisted here. There we go. A little bit of wax. Twist it and just rub a little dab in there. Alright, insert my materials into that loop. And if you put them in the loop and then give it one turn, it actually will help kind of lock in the materials. I made sure I put them in 50-50. But you can you can adjust them if you really need to. And spin, spin, spin. Alright, so there it fell off the loop. And get my brush and give it a little brush here. Separate those materials a little bit. And plus when you do these composite like loops, you start getting this kind of mild effect, even though you can kind of see it. In the loop here you can see kind of a little bit of striation that little bit of natural coloration really helps sell that you know this is a creature it's alive i hate making one i mean minus all white flies because um, those work pretty well um, i like having some different tones and hues in my flies so we're going to come up here again and i'm going to really smush these materials up against one side of that dubbing loop I'm putting I'm putting a fair amount of pressure when I do this and I'm wiggling my fingers just to make sure everything's switched over to that one side of the loop. Makes wrapping it a heck of a lot easier. Alright, so we're gonna continue wrapping. Now I'm doing pretty tight wraps. Um, you don't have to do this tight if you want it to be a little bit more airy. I just depending on the style or what I'm trying to emulate with the fly. Um, sculpins are a pretty pretty dense looking creature so I like to have a fairly fairly tight wrap when I do these. If you're doing something maybe like more like a bait fish um, you could probably go you know you don't have to put the wraps so close together but this works good for a sculpin. All right I'll take off my bobbin, get the thread here, make a nice little head Right. Get my bobbin rest out of the way here. Alright, and then just come over and lock that loop and thread down. Alright, there we go. So that section's done. And trim that off. And now we can do a throw lip finish on this hook section here. Now I want to make it super clear that I totally did not invent this uh, composite looping. 
Um, it was actually developed, I've heard a couple different stories, but I've always seen it done out west. Um, and guys like Jerry French use this technique to do you know, different, you know, scalp ends and different steelhead and salmon flies. So I always kind of thought it'd be cool to throw it into, you know, what we trout fishermen and bass fishermen do, just for the fact that it, it's a neat technique, makes your flies look really nice, and it, it brings a different look to your flies that, you know, sometimes you normally wouldn't have with some of the barring and the different catching of the light for your flies. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this thing out here. Get all those fibers kind of out and go ahead and start picking them. Those rubber legs moving. Right. Give it a good brushing here. You may pick out a little bit of fur and stuff. That's fine. Okay. Now I'm going to kind of look and see if there's any of those little straggling rubber fibers, which if they're too long, I kind of want to trim them a little bit. But if they're not too bad, I'll leave them be. That looks pretty good right there. There's actually one one little goober right there. Trim that up. Okay. All right. So that's we're halfway done. So as we look here, this is what the fish are going to be seeing. So you get that wiggle, and you have the little station of that dubbing loop. Actually, right here, I see a little bit of part that wasn't picked off. I'll go ahead and just take my scissors in. Trim that up. There we go. All right. So now this is a this is one size shank bigger than the one we used on the tail. And this is the kit. So you get 15 of each, 9 to 20 millimeter. And 20 is the longest, so I would say this is probably uh, the 20 millimeter. So we'll go ahead and throw that in the vise. Make sure it's nice and actually... God, I, wanna, I was building game changers earlier, and I just want to keep adding shanks. You want to put this in the eye of the hook first. Whoa! That went flying. Let's get another one out of here. The only thing I don't like about these is sometimes you need to help the the bend a little bit to put it into the eye of a, of a hook. That's better. Okay, so we'll go ahead and throw this in. I want to make sure. The problem with these, any well, any kind of game changer fly is the that back wiggle wants to wiggle a little bit too much. So we'll just hopefully it wants to stay there and be nice to us today. Okay. So I'll go ahead and get some thread out, and I'm going to start coming in here, we're going to close up the shank, get a little loop, and really cinch that uh, little opening down, and trim the end. Create just a little bit of a base on that shank just to kind of help the material stick to it a little bit. All right, and we're basically going to do the same the same thing. It's the same procedure over and over. So, and actually, I see a couple little crazy rubbers over here that I'll trim up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we'll get some more. Get change your chenille here. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could probably build a whole fly out of this stuff, but um, I like it to use it kind of as a material prop or just a, as a filler. You know, if you're doing, it works really nice if you're doing like, you know, if you want to change this fly and make it a kind of a feather changer, you definitely could. Um, you could even, instead of doing the whole dub loop thing, you could do a brush. So depending on how you want to do it, it's, it's kind of up to you, but I like to show folks this is just a basic starting point 
you know, adjust it to how you want to fish and tie. I know our, our smallmouth especially, um, they really like game changers, but they have to be tied kind of a certain way. Uh, the feather ones do okay. The, the best ones I've I think I found is is kind of more the style of the polar changer where there's a brush in it and you have a little bit more body to it I think sometimes the the feather changers don't have enough bulk and they slim down just a touch so I like to make stuff that has kind of a couple couple layers to it and make it have a dense appearance even though you know it's still still pretty light to, to cast and this fly will have some lead eyes to help it get down but all in all, once this thing gets wet, the only thing that's really heavy on it is the, the rabbit strip. And we're not using a super long rabbit strip, so we'll save you on a little bit in the long run. I actually tie a couple different variations of this. Um, instead of using rabbit strips, in the back I'll use, you know, marabou. Um, the, the Montana stuff works really well. Uh, or you can just use, you know, maybe a couple different strands of, of tan or white or whatever color your your gobies and sculpins are in. Black works pretty good too. So I'll make my my third loop here. And we're gonna lock it in. Now on this one we're actually gonna use some rubber legs. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of a space up front here just to have my rubber legs. So I can tie those in. Find my dubbing tool here. can make our third little loop here now this I'm gonna start not I don't want to say packing in the materials but I'm really gonna use more than I've used in the previous one so if you notice it does have a, a nice little taper so this is a little bit a little bit bigger we're gonna go bigger and we're gonna do the same thing on the front on the actual hook but we're gonna add a brush over top of it just to kind of give it a more solid appearance and help build up a little bit of mass up there. And I do tie two versions of this fly. Uh, the one is with a marabou and senyo dub head, and then the one with rabbit and the, the fuzzy fiber in a loop. And the fuzzy fiber in a loop looks cool, and it does push a lot of water, but sometimes it's it can be a pain. So I thought maybe we'd do kind of a hybrid for this one and just do a, a laser dub head. Both work equally well. I find that the laser dub head actually goes a little, it kind of doesn't have as much resistance in the water. So it'll, it'll go a little smoother in some heavier current. But you can miss, you can mess around with heads. You could do, I mean, pretty much anything. For the head, you can do, you know, a spun loop and trim it. You can do a brush head and trim it. You can do pretty much whatever you want. Alright, so I'm going to get moving here. We'll start putting our little rubber legs here. And sometimes I'll even take two colors of rubber legs and throw them in. Uh, that works pretty well too. You just want to be sparse with it. You know, you don't... A sculpin has kind of a buggy look to the creature, actually, but it, 